Today we're going to make some progress on the Shasta trailer rebuild. We're not making any progress today. We're putting together some footage that was mainly filmed in February of 2015. So this video is going to focus entirely on how we put together the propane gas system in this trailer. Sounds exciting. I want to do it... They say that sarcasm is... Let me think about this. It's a good one. Sarcasm is the least intelligent form of humor there is. Okay, it's going to be a real gas. One video per specific system of the trailer. I'm doing it that way so that people working on their own trailers will be able to find the information they need without too much useless conversation. And it's little manageable chunks. Yeah, manageable chunks. We can deal with it. Little bite-sized pieces. I guess there might still be some useless conversation. No getting around it. Before we get started on how I built the propane system, let's talk about how propane works in a trailer in the first place. Need to go outside for that. Propane is stored in these tanks at the front of the trailer. I painted the tongue red. That's so he won't lose it. This hadn't been painted yet when we were working on the gas lines, but by the time I was ready to paint it, we were almost done with the entire project, and at that point I was very anxious just to get the trailer finished. I don't even think I filmed it. So there it is, seven years later. The propane in these tanks is liquid, but it pressurizes itself because the boiling temperature for propane is only negative 43 degrees. I looked that up. So when I open up this valve, a little bit of that liquid boils off and turns into a gas. It comes out of here at about 100 PSI, but that fluctuates with temperature, but it's immediately reduced down to less than 1 PSI by the regulator. That's the wife. <laughs> comes out here with a full head of steam and shuts it right down to almost nothing. That's, what, that's it. The low pressure defeated gas goes down here underneath the trailer and connects to this iron pipe which is factory original 1973 just a little rusty here it is from the other side and seven years younger we're into the old footage now at this point i had removed the entire gas system except for this section of pipe which i decided to reuse did you reuse that looks like you dredged it out of the ocean Look how nice my tarp was at that time. It is nice. I just recently threw that tarp away. It turned into a Jesus tarp. Holy. <laughs> she accused me of not being very funny so far in this video. Thought I'd just prove you right. <laughs> Here's what a 32 year old me had to say about things. My gas line is here in front and I need to bring service up through the floor about right here for the refrigerator and water heater and begin right here for the space heater. Hopefully I got the right fittings. I have an assortment of nipples, elbows, and tees. I was pluckier in 2015. <laughs> what happened? Maybe you were overregulated. <laughs> I'm making up these connections using joint compound. I don't know if I should say that. That's what it's called, though. <laughs> Pipe dope. <laughs> I don't think that's any better. Marshmallow cream. There we go. Now it just sounds like an Android version. So here's how it looks so far. I have gas coming up through the floor right here to service the refrigerator and water heater. And I'm about to fabricate a piece of copper tubing that will travel from right here through the floor to the furnace. Before I make that pipe, let's back up a few seconds. I want to explain a little more about this plumbing. Gas lines in dwellings and RVs are made of black iron pipe, or if you're close to an appliance or need to get into a tight spot, flexible metal tubing, which is what I'm transitioning to right here. This adapter converts iron pipe thread to a flare connection, and that's flare like it expands out, not glittery fingernails and a new perm. Not like Joanna's flare. Or lack of flair. She didn't have enough flair. Uh huh. She quit with flair. Usually the pipes look like this, but I didn't use these on the trailer because they only come pre made 
in specific sizes and I needed a lot of custom lengths probably more than 15 pieces you don't want to do the bare minimum this is a piece of 3 8 inch copper tubing that I bought to tie the furnace into the gas system. For the same price as a prefabricated line, I was able to buy the tubing, some flare fittings, and a flaring tool. Before I flare the ends of this pipe, I need to be smart and install my cushioning tube and the fittings. Speaking of being smart, what you see me doing right now is not smart. Ooh. There's no reason to have this fitting on the pipe. It's fine that I put one on the other end, and I can flare that side, but I should have left this one alone until the pipe was in the trailer, because the hole in the floor is big enough for the rubber cushion, but not for the brass fitting. I remember that. Wouldn't fit. This is a good example of the difference between talking like you know about something, and actually having competence. There's probably lots of masters of their craft who aren't any good at communication. And there's people who don't know anything about a given topic, but speak with authority and eloquence, confidence. We are neither of those. So the way this tool works is the clamp holds the pipe, and the amount the pipe sticks up from the clamp determines how big the flare will be. The screwy coney thing pushes down on it and creates the shape, and if I do it right, the flare will fit inside the threaded portion of the connector. Okay, that was simple enough. Let's see if it worked. Looks good from here. Now I'll do the other side. Don't do it! You're making a mistake! Oh, this is intense. At this time, I was getting ready to flare the other end of the tube, which I didn't film because we just did the exact thing for the other side and... How much tube flaring do you need to see? <laughs> but before I did that, I discovered something useful. One end of that pipe was cut from the factory, but the other end I cut with one of these turnaround cutters. Turnaround cutter? That was also a mistake, because as these cut, they also pinch the tube inwardly. You might be able to see that on the screen here. Oh, it curled it under, and you want to flare it out. I also have this demonstrator. One side I cut with I need to focus the camera. Hold on. One side of this copper pipe was cut with a hacksaw, but the other one was done with this thing. If I try to flare this, instead of expanding into a nice smooth funnel shape, it'll just crinkle down and bulge at the sides. and be unusable. You wanna see what I'm talking about? I brought the tool out here. An experiment. Let's see some science, professor! I was reading about how to flare copper tubing yesterday, after we filmed this, and learned that before a pipe is flared, the inside ridge left behind by the cutting tool should be removed with a reamer. I didn't know that years ago, and if I had, probably would have seen better results. So, this demonstration is meaningless. It really is science. I can tell from here, it doesn't like it. It does not like it at all. So right there, it's bottomed out. I'll show you how it looks. I'll show you the devastation. Well, this didn't turn out exactly like I remember. The general shape is right, but the entire top edge of the pipe curled in on itself. So this could work, but definitely not as good as if I'd flared the other side. You're gonna do that in too, right? Now, we have this whole nice flat surface area to go up against that flare fitting. How many times do you think we'll say the word flare in this video? <laughs> she finds ways to cope with her boredom while we film. Beep boop, beep boop. <laughs> eventually, I re <laughs> eventually I realized that I needed to have the tube through the floor before I flared the end. So I cut off my new flare and I've got a question for you. Just wait. There! Did you see that? I did. What are you running for? <laughs> I don't know! And especially, wait... <laughs> especially in flip-flops and socks. That's a look. The only time I wear flip-flops and socks 
as if I'm welding. <laughs> I reflared the tube again once it was in the trailer. Perfect. And connected it underneath. As far as how tight these fittings should be, flare type connectors, like I'm working on here, should be as tight as a seven year old child could get it using an eight inch wrench. The iron pipes need to be tighter though. They use a pipe wrench and you'd want those at least as tight as two seven year olds could get it. <laughs> Working together. Or maybe one wife. More or less. What? I think that's an insult. To the wife or the seven year old? Hey. You're strong. And I love you. The gas line for the furnace is done. The other pipe I put through the floor will provide gas for the rest of the appliances. But I didn't film making any of those lines. I don't remember why. You probably didn't want to. You were in a bad mood then. You didn't like the trailer very much. I was in a rush. But here it is after it was finished and I turned the camera back on. Gas service comes up here through the floor and goes up to the water heater. It tees off down here to go to the refrigerator and then continues on to the range. This is different from the factory design. I brought gas over to the stove along the front of the trailer on the inside. Originally it went through that rusty iron pipe underneath. Remember that pipe? And it stubbed out through the floor. You can see it in the lower corner of the screen right here. Oh yeah, stumpy. You look good in this clip. You definitely could beat a couple seven-year-olds at pipe tightening. Oh yeah, I just, I'd hold the wrench up so they couldn't reach it. Height advantage. And I'd win. Strategy. <laughs> it's time to install the heater. It's from 1973, original equipment. Ugly, but it works. You're talking about the heater, right? Yeah, you're not from 1973. <laughs> I walked right into that one. I hope my cutout is the right size. I haven't checked it yet. So far, so good. This is going to be kind of a tight bathroom. The man speaks the truth. Maybe you should demonstrate just how small the bathroom is. What do you mean demonstrate in the bathroom? <laughs> I'm not a demonstrator should... that way. You should stand in it so they can see. Well, I just was, but I don't want to show how it is now but because the... it's done. Okay. Well, there's a toilet in there now. <laughs> right. It only... And you have to toil to get to it. Right. It only gets more cramped than what you see in the footage. And just like that, the furnace is secured, the gas line is hooked up, now I need to go outside and install the exhaust pipe. I've got my butyl tape applied, let's see how this fits. I might have been nervous right here because for this to go together, the hole in the side of the trailer needed to be correctly aligned with the interior framing where the heater attaches. And I built those two things months apart from one another. And there was measuring involved. So, multiple opportunities for error. But it worked. This is a direct vent heater. Fresh air gets pulled in through the larger pipe and exhaust exits through the inner, smaller pipe. It's a good design because the exhaust goes out and the air that you're heating stays in. Thanks for venting your exhaust. It's for our health. <laughs> I put on the outer cover the next morning. The front grill on the inside was in decent condition when we got the trailer, and I probably could have reused it as is, but after we took everything apart, it sat out in the yard from July to February. And I didn't go out of my way to treat it kindly. It's always important to keep a tidy workstation. So it needed new paint, and Camera Girl came through. She did a two-tone brown on the main part with metallic blue trim. Beautiful job. Thank you. Here it is present day. Still looks good. The nameplate fell off though. And it's working. Can you see it chooching in there? Oh yeah. This little heater works really well. 
My only complaint is that we didn't use high temperature paint. It lets you know when it's on by the smell. But that was mostly just after we painted it. Now, all we're used to it. We're used to it. <laughs> That's it for the gas system, except for connecting the refrigerator and the stove, which will come later. If you're interested in seeing some videos related to this one, I'm going to put some picture links on the screen. Here's the first video we ever did about the Shasta trailer, and the next one after this. If you can still see my face, it means it doesn't exist yet. But it will or, soon. My, or my face exists, but the video doesn't. Yeah! Spending so much time out here making this video makes me feel like we should go on a trip. Thanks for watching.